We all crave our grandmother's cooking, right? Well, what if there were a place that you could go anytime and get that home-cooked meal from anywhere in the world? Mancha, 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 mancha. That place exists in Staten Island, just behind that scaffolding, right over there. Meet Joe, he's Italian by way of Brooklyn. My name is Jody Scaravella, and I own Enoteca Maria. We don't employ chefs, we employ grandmothers. When Joe opened the restaurant in 2006, he noticed something. Every culture was coming to the restaurant to celebrate these Italian grandmothers. So I thought to myself, how nice would it be if we celebrated everybody's culture? And so Nana's of the World was born. There are probably somewhere between 30 and 40 grandmothers from different countries. My name is Habiba. I'm from Algeria. My name is Lubov and I'm from Moscow, Russia. Soy Rosa Correa. Vengo de Lima, Peru. I come from Sri Lanka. Bulgaria. Dublin, Ireland. From Armenia. Buenos Aires, Argentina. Each night there are two grandmothers cooking. One is always Italian, the other from somewhere else. When they're in the kitchen cooking, it's a completely different energy. It's their day to shine. It's their day to show what their cultural cuisine is all about. You know, it sounds kind of corny, but they do cook with love. And that feeling for Joe is about more than the restaurant. When I opened the Enoteca, I was really grief-stricken. My mom and my sister had passed. It was comforting to have these grandmothers in the kitchen cooking and, you know, they would pinch my cheek and say, you want to try this? And at that point, I realized that what we were doing was much bigger than I thought it was going to be. When you walk through the restaurant, if you listen, every table that you pass by, they're talking about their mothers or they're talking about their grandmothers. It kind of evokes a trip down memory lane. We've been called crazy a lot of times by a lot of different people. We were coming with something that nobody had ever put on the table before, so people didn't know how to react. My name is Camila Saitla. We're in Bolivia, in La Paz, in Restaurant Gusto, where I'm the executive head chef. Gusto is a crazy restaurant on a mountain. <laughs> It started out as a small culinary school project, and then we decided to go big. Founded by globally celebrated chef Claus Meyer, Gusto is a unique culinary experiment in social outreach. The goal? Proving that food can do more than just feed people. It can educate and inspire. One of the poorest countries in Latin America, but with an abundance of diverse and obscure ingredients, Bolivia seemed to be the perfect spot to set up shop. The idea of, of, of giving something back in a development country is where Gusto comes into the picture. Gusto's goal is to train a new generation of Bolivians to cook, prepare and serve high-end cuisine using only Bolivian ingredients. Gusto in tres. Yeah. Uno, dos, tres. Gusto. Gusto is not meant to be a typical culinary school. It's meant to be a, a learning by doing institute. The education needs to come with, with care. You can educate somebody if you don't care about them. Mi nombre es María Eugenia Pasa. Actualmente soy supervisora de meseros y también me estoy enfocando más en el área de sommeliería. Desde el momento en que se entra aquí, eh, ves que todo es producto boliviano, que en ningún otro lado, digamos, lo han revalorizado esto y ver que Gusto lo ha hecho. Gusto ha cambiado mi vida. There's a lot of potential, there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of pride. One of the big things we're doing is empowering people, yes. It's a movement that, that touches the whole society. Un día yo estaba bajando la pizza y vino una ventolera y la pizza salió volando y le cayó un cliente en la cara porque no me dio tiempo a gritarle a cliente. Ah! In the center of Havana, there's a pair of entrepreneurs who are taking pizza delivery to new heights.
yo soy Marta 1, la más vieja, y ella es Marta 2, la más joven. Dos hawaianas. ¿Se demora el queso y la cebolla? ¿Ya van para abajo? Dale. Al principio la bajábamos por la escalera, nosotras así con la pizza caminando. Nos cansábamos mucho. Y la gente nos fue dando idea, idea, y surgió la idea de con una cesta bajar la pizza por el balcón. En 2010, Marta No. 1 y su esposo fueron granted a private business license and opened up a pizzeria. A few months ago, her husband passed away. Now, her best friend is helping her keep the pizzeria alive. La pizzería se llama A Mi Manera, porque usted pide la pizza a la manera suya, <laughs> y nosotros se la hacemos. Since then, the pizzeria, which operates from Marta No. 1's roof, has filled countless stomachs with their secret recipe. El problema de la pizza está en la masa y en la salsa. Y cada pizzero tiene su receta, cada pizzero hace su salsa a su manera. Ellos no dicen su secreto. Eso sí, hemos tratado de que mantengan el mismo tipo de masa. Aquí la masa es manual. Y la calidad de las pizzas, indiscutiblemente, es buena. Aquí vienen gente de playa, del municipio de Playa Banadía, a comprar pizza. La pizza ayuda al cubano porque ayuda a la gente a sobrevivir y a salir adelante. Ever since Marta No. 2 joined Marta No. 1 in business, the two have formed a true partnership. Las dos Marta pueden hacer cualquier cosa, las dos Marta pueden tomar cualquier decisión. Cualquiera de las dos tenemos la potestad para decidir acerca de lo que hace falta y lo que es mejor para el negocio. Siempre el trato de hacer las cosas riéndome y riéndonos nosotros. ¿Por qué? Porque la risa te alegra el día y la sonrisa tiene tremendo valor. Great big story, we in here. Mama, we made it. Everybody always say that. I think it's better than my mom's. I think my grandma couldn't even do this. They think we, we got our grandmas cooking for us. No, this is us, we did that. Like, yeah, us young men. <laughs> Trap is, is take risks and prosper. And that's what we doing in here. So that's what we eat, it's Trap Kitchen. 15 shrimps in the bag, man. Trap Kitchen is, is a spot where you prepare products to be distributed underground. We just use that mentality with food. We're a full-blown catering service. And you also can order for delivery during the week. My team consists of myself and three other guys. I call them my brothers, my boy AWOL, um, DJ Kev, and Bad News. We're a small team, but we get the job done all the time, you know? I mean, we always Crips and Bloods, you know what I mean? Doing that kind of stuff, of course, I'm getting arrested every other day for nothing. They're shooting at us. So now, the only thing we worried about is some food burning up, like, or running out. That's it. I was talking to my mom. She's like, you got to do something, son. I'm like, okay, well, what can I do? I seen the Corner Blue commercial on TV. I'm like, damn, that look kind of cool. I could probably do something with that. I know, like, you can make good money cooking. I moved to Vegas, started culinary school, and that's where I began to practice my craft, you know? He really came in here from Vegas. He like, bro, what we gonna do? Like, we need some money. I said, wait, we can sell some food. Through Instagram, I, I was like posting my food, and people was like, oh, that looks so good, that looks great. And I was like, okay, now it's time for me to offer this food to the streets. Like how a, a, a D-boy pushes dope, you know what I'm saying? And it worked. The key to our success, we never gave up, man. Every day, that's all I think about is how can we improve our company? How can we improve our food? How can we improve the taste? Even though I mean, we're in the house trapping, I feel like it's a real restaurant. 